welcome to my new studio. You've probably seen the short sort of cool slow-mo BTS thing that my friend and I filmed, my friend Rob did the film in that. I'm sure you could tell the production value had upped somewhat. I don't have the skill set nor time to do that sort of thing, but he's very good at it. So he did me some cool B-roll, which I'm gonna sort of incorporate some more of it into this. But this video, we're gonna talk about the reasoning behind the studio, why everything is where it is, how I've gone around building it, and how I sort of make it work for my professional life. Now, being a photographer is a particularly hands-on job, and being a commercial one at like that requires a studio in the UK for a lot of us. Now, this isn't the studio where I shoot everything. This is my studio for creating and playing and doing all my personal work and working with local clients and smaller clients. When we do big shoots, we rent big studios and big cameras and big lights, but this is my this is my place to get creative. It's my sort of little corner of sanity. Now we're in the office at the moment. So it's pretty late at night because in the UK, the school's all closed due to COVID. So I'm doing homeschooling until three o'clock when I'm not shooting. And then from four to 11, I'm in the office doing my admin-y sort of the busy work that needs to get done. The emails, the planning, the prep, all that sort of stuff. So, and this. So this is Moggy and I in here today. Now I want to start off by talking about the office because this was a, a big deal for me. This was actually making it nicer. So most of my studio is built to be as efficient as possible. It's very utilitarian. People say it looks like chaos and clutter, but I sort of have a system where the more often I use it, the easier it is to touch. And that means having a lot of stuff out, a lot of stuff on the walls and just things everywhere. But it makes sense to me and it allows me to work in the way that I enjoy working and to sort of have that minimal effort thing going on. For example, this here, my lights, my microphone, my monitor, the batteries, the tripod, the whole thing is on one stand. So I just have to hit go and we can start filming. And it's those sorts of little things that really mean that I can get so much done each week rather than wasting time going, right, let's do a YouTube video, we need to get microphones out, we need to get cameras out, we need to find a location. I had a wall in here, it's covered in greenery. So all I have to do is point the camera at me and say what I want to say. Now, obviously it's not as good as when I do a big setup in the studio, but sometimes I don't have the time, nor the inclination because I'm tired and I've got other stuff to do. So this whole building is about efficiency. So the studio to start with was a big empty warehouse and I've sort of slowly built it out. Now the office itself is very simple in terms of my setup. I have a MacBook Pro, it goes back and forth with me, goes on location with me. It's an old one. It's nothing fancy, it's like 16 gig of RAM, quad core sort of jobby, but it does the job for what I do. That's then plugged into a sort of hub with multiple USB sockets, which is powered, so it's USB 3. And I've got my hard drives plugged into there that I'm working with. All goes up to Backblaze, it goes into a couple of BenQ monitors, and it's a pretty basic setup. I've got my Wacom for my sort of fine tune editing, got a decent mouse, decent keyboard. But the big change that I made in here was that I painted the place a nice color. I went for a nice dark gray, so it's not as boring and brash and white. I've got nice chairs, nice desks. I spent a little bit of time making it more comfortable in here because I spend so long in this chair with Moggage here. I don't know if you can see it there. Moggy chilling out behind me that we thought we'd make it nice. I've got a nice cat tree in here, a cat flap now. Um, Got a I've got the cat flap because it's freezing in the warehouse, so we don't heat the studio when we're not shooting and opening the door for her every time she had a, an urge to go outside was just wasting money, so we've got a cat flap. Uh, we've got rugs on the floor. I built my nice coffee station at the back, which is really important for me just to have that little moment of peace. I have a completely manual coffee setup for when I'm not making coffee for clients, where you grind it yourself, you press the espresso yourself. It's very pleasing to do. It's just a nice little thing to give me a reason to take some time away from the screen. Um, when we're shooting, we use the Mocha Master so we can make like a litre and a half of half decent coffee in one go. We also built the shelves from floor to ceiling in here so we can store stuff. And again, the more often it's used, so my sound bag, for example, with my headphones and stuff in, that is low down so it gets used quite often. Whereas my BTS bag gets used a little bit less often, that's a bit further back. And then right at the top of my tax returns from five years ago, which hopefully I'll never need to get down again because it's pretty high up there. I think we've got 14 foot high ceilings. But apart from that, this is the office. Very straightforward, very simple, nothing fancy in here, no big computers, which may be changing soon, but it's just a nice place to be. It's nice to work in here. It feels comfortable, it feels homely. And I struggled with doing that and allowing myself to spend time and money on making it like that, but it's really paid off. So let's head into the studio. I'm gonna talk about each aspect of it. I'm gonna go into full detail in every aspect and set for videos like the tether station, the workshop and all those bits. But for now, I'm just gonna sort of give you the ethos and the general things. So if you wanna see like a full breakdown of my sort of 
digital capture and things like that, do hit subscribe because they'll be coming up as the next few videos. Right, let's head off. So someone in the comments was asking why I've got so many desks, and this is one of the many desks. I forget mugs. Now this one here is my archiving desk. This sort of keeps all of my files on site. So back here is about 45 terabytes of hard drives. It has every still image I've ever taken, and they are mirrored to a cloud, and they're also elsewhere as well. But I have a pretty robust backup system at the moment, which I'm very proud of. But this is my on-site one. So if I need to make a treatment for a client and send it off, and I don't have it to hand, maybe it's something I shot ages ago that I don't particularly think I need, it'll be on here. Now my main working drives, every drive I'm working on, has a folder called portfolio, which has my latest portfolio on it, but I've shot so much over the years that sometimes we need to dive into this. And then it doubles up as a spare computer. Sometimes we're doing focus stacking, so someone can use this to do the focus stacking. It's just a Mac Mini back there, nothing powerful or flashy. Might use it to make proxy files for videos when other machines are in use. It's just a spare machine really, which doubles up as an archive. Now the original plan was to show you this as soon as I'd finished building it, knowing that it would never be tidy again, but then I got busy and we shot. So this is kind of what it always looks like. We've got some leftover stuff from a food shoot on the, we'll call them the sort of mortuary boards because of these stainless steel metal kitchen bits. We've got some pop up there. You might've seen the shots. I'm not sure when this is coming out. You might not have done. Um, but this is my kitchen. It is not a fancy kitchen. There are better kitchens and better studios. This is just my gets the job done kitchen. I've got a fridge in the studio office, which is like the, the drinks fridge for staff and everyone. But out here, this is the food fridge and the food freezer for shooting. So anything in there is not safe to weed. So it often has a weird smell going on in the fridge and there's always something bizarre in there which is being kept for a shoot. But this is the shoot kit. We have an induction hob, an oven, fridge freezer, plenty of workspace, some decent knives. You know, we've got sort of the, the steamers, um, pressure cookers panini press, that sort of thing out here. And it's just enough to get most jobs done. Sometimes I need something a bit more high caliber, we need like rational ovens and we'll go to a big studio, but for most of the time when we're practicing, this is great, so I'm at my lunch. Gets the job done. I've also got another green wall out here, I don't know if you've noticed. That serves no purpose whatsoever apart from, it just stops the place looking so warehousey. Um, I'm sure I'll use it at some point for a shoot, but just a different vantage point, I guess, of the studio, which was a very plain white wall um, and needed a bit of a spruce. This is my third and final desk in the office. This is my tether station. It's a rock and roller cart. It's got an iMac on it, which has 16 gig of RAM. It's reasonable, it's nothing special. It's so old, actually, that you can't update it to the latest software or iOS software, but it works fine for the purposes of tethering. All we do is shoot into Capture One. Nothing gets edited on here. We do calibrate the screen still, but we don't calibrate it in such a critical way that I do my main BenQ monitors. But pretty straightforward, I've got a hard drive which keeps all the files on it on here. It runs a sort of Mac backup software as well and it's also connected to Backblaze. Every computer I have is connected to Backblaze because it's so cheap, why not? Don't get paid by them, I pay them. It's just a great bit of software. But yeah, this is great. Moggy sleeps on the bottom shelf whilst we're editing and working. And this is pretty much used every time we shoot. I can't remember the last time that I shot not tethered. So my camera up here goes to my tether tools cable into this and we're good to go. It's a pretty decent setup, works really well. The screen's big so everyone can see it. And then we run the Capture One pilot software on all the Apple devices so people can see things without getting too close to one another, which is a big deal at the moment. Now the area behind me is where the clients sort of hang out, they sit down on the sofa, have their coffee here. We've got PowerPoints next to them so they can get their laptops plugged in, decent Wi-Fi, coffee and tea around here. This is just kind of like the chill out area. It's where Moggy normally sleeps if no one else is around. Um, it's nothing fancy, it's just an old settee from home which we had no use for. A couple of coffee tables, about 10,000 copies of National Geographic hidden underneath them. It's just, you know, a nice place to be whilst you're waiting for the shoot to happen. But then if you head further down this way... So back here is a lot of my grip and things. It's where my lights are kept, power cables, flags, silks, scrims all of that sort of stuff, everything has a place. We've got three of these red mechanical trucks around the room. 
and they're all labeled and everything's got a nice little spot in them. And then we've got the big boxes full of lights and we've got the smaller boxes full of more common lights. And then we've got the lights which are out and about. So if I need to do something, I've got a huge light ready and set up just here. Or if I need a second light, I've got one just here ready to go. I've got a couple of spare packs on here, modifiers that we use often, all the sort of commonly used stuff is ready to go and easy to get to. And that's really important to me. Things that we use less often, that'll be in the drawers and in the cupboards, and even less often, that'll be in the main office. I really like these modifiers. I then have a selection of trolleys. So on this rather fetching gin trolley, this is all my go-to styling stuff. And again, we have more styling stuff hidden away, but this is the stuff we need in every shoot. We've got pipettes, we've got the glycerin, tape measures, super glue. I'm gonna do a whole video on Watson here at some point. It needs cleaning actually, it's a bit, it's a bit grim in here. There's a, there's a lot of grease and fat going on, but it's all in here, it's all ready to go. And this is just, you know, always on the go. Air dusters, what's this? Uh, atmosphere, if you want it to be a little bit moody. Ooh, bit of suspense. And uh, a bit of crystal clear matte spray, which has one of those nice shakers in it. But yes, this is all ready to go. And on the trolley so we can wheel it in set. Stylists bring their own stuff, but I like to have my stuff here as well, just in case they've left something somewhere else, they've forgotten something, or they just didn't know they needed something. Now this big trolley here is my assistance trolley. We've got a paper roll for writing down the sort of camera settings of a shoot, some gloves if you've got to touch some stuff you don't want to touch. We've got our color calibration charts. We've got labelers, scissors, spirit levels, color charts, rulers, and then down below, we've got hundreds and hundreds of these, because these are great, the bulldog clips. Got these tweezers here, which should actually be on the styling tray. And then as we go lower and lower down, we've got sort of lens cleaning kits, uh, laser kits, we've got the multi sockets, extension leads. On the edges here, we've got a couple of like black flags hanging on. On this side, we've got a roll of trusty gaff tape. Don't buy cheap stuff. This is proper cloth gaff tape. It makes such a difference. It doesn't ruin all your stuff. And then we've got light meters and things like that. All ready to go, all accessible. Clips are literally stuck on boxes. And this is how I like it. Here's the assistance trolley. Everything they need is on this trolley or they can put it on this trolley from elsewhere if it's in deeper storage, but it's good to go. So that's my grip, my trolleys. You can see my paper rolls behind me all neatly set out, easy to get to. They didn't used to be. They used to be piled up against the wall, which is now where my set boards and poly boards are. But this just allows me to keep them a little bit neater and easier to get to. So what we're gonna do now is spin the camera around. We're gonna look at the chaos side of the studio because this is now feeling quite neat and tidy compared to before. And also, I painted the floor because I kept getting trolled about how bad it was. I didn't care, but now that I've done it, it does look a lot better and also much easier to clean. The previous floor had become really porous and dusty and it was just, it was battered, it needed painting. So you were right, I was wrong, it's painted. Let's move on from this. So as I'm sat here like a British gent, over there is my office, back over there is my shooting area and behind me here is the entrance. So we've got a chest of drawers. This is the seat that Moggy sits on during shoots. I don't know why, but she's taken it as her own. Um, in here we have all sorts of weird stuff, which has nothing to do with photography pile of black t-shirts, post, expenses, boring stuff, but it looks pretty. I've then got some more modifiers up here. Loads of my modifiers are stored up here. I've got a huge softbox up there, which is bigger than me. One which is about the same size as me, then beauty dishes, soft lighters, reflectors, grids, more tape and things like that. In the far corner there is all the stuff that I get sent to me to test. And then I don't really know what to do with, so it's in a storage unit over here. I've got the wooden plank that I use as my shoot table. Then got some sets and behind that I've got some house insulation painted black on one side, white on the other side, which we use for reflectors. Sometimes just blocking that little bit of sun that peeps through the blinds. And then way back yonder is my workbench. And my workbench is where my tools are kept for building stuff for shoots, for building the studio. When I got this space, I didn't actually own any tools. I think I owned like a multi-tool at Allen Keys. I've had to buy everything bit by bit and learn as we go, but it's got angle grinders, circular saws, drills, Allen Keys of every possible size and type, all that sort of stuff that you need to build a studio like this. So this area here is the workbench, and then sadly, the sort of anti-back COVID face mask setup, but Normally it's just a pile of boxes near the door because we, we just get so much post here. I don't know why, I've had a lot of post recently and this keeps it all in one place. But at the moment we've got a light in there in pieces because my friend needs some spare parts and 
I have a box of broken lights just in case I ever need spares and repairs. Um, but there we go, nothing fancy, pretty cluttered, but again, everything labeled, everything in a place, every cable and plug is labeled, it's all nailed down. Very Casey Neistat because I quite like his thought process, I guess, in doing these things, but there we go. You might have also noticed the huge array of plants in here. Because this is a warehouse, it is so bleak when I first moved in. It was a gray floor, gray ceiling, slightly off yellow walls, and it just needed a bit of life in there. And sometimes you have to spend a bit of money to make something look nice as well. I know it's not to everybody's taste, but this is kind of my aesthetic, the sort of crazy chaos everywhere and plants dangling down things. It's what I like. I'm happy with the place. I am gonna do more to it. There are more things that need to be done to it, but for now, it's gonna be fine for the next year. Sound treating this room's a biggie. Whenever I shoot videos in here, it takes me so long to set up because of that, which is why I've got the new green wall in the office. There's so much stuff in there with the shelves from ceiling to floor that it doesn't have this echo that this room has. So that's a real bonus for me.